Today's video is all about hard breachers and we're going to take a look at how to improve as a hard breacher on Rainbow Six. So without me talking anymore guys, let's dive in and get started. What is happening guys, it's Alan here from the Dangleberries and once again I'm here with Elevate to talk about hard breachers. Now in one of the most recent videos we talked about how to improve as an overall player, but now we're going to focus in on the hard breach department and just give you some extra tips to elevate your game. So we're going to take a look at Maverick for this first trick, a very simple one here on Clubhouse, a really good way to safely open this wall, especially if the wall has bandits on it or cades. So what you do is repel up the side of the building and you can actually slowly walk down the wall really far down to the bottom where you'll be able to actually get the wall with the blowtorch all the way across. You'll hear the sound cue that you've gotten that bottom panel off and then you do the same on the top and because you're doing it right across the top, the red beam on the inside inside will keep you protected from any defenders trying to shoot from inside. You'll then be able to get the wall open, you'll see the reinforcement disappear, and it'll just be a soft wall, and you can have a sledge or a buck, get the wall open, and you have access into the site. Now, another really important aspect to Maverick is creating lines of sights for your teammates. This works really well when you're trying to get the wall open. You create lines of sights for your teammates to give you that cover so you can get the wall open. Now, a perfect example here on Oregon for this tower wall, you create a couple of lines of sight for your teammates to control and keep the defenders away from the wall. And then you can go about getting that small hole open up in the corner. And with the added good news that Tubro has been nerfed against Maverick, Maverick is now even more viable and a great option to bring to the table when you're attacking. Now, again, the most important thing here is you need to be creating these lines of sights to help protect you as you're trying to get the wall open or helping in getting the wall open. So creating multiple lines of sights is not an issue. And of course, if you're rocking that Elevate Maverick bundle, you are already ahead of the game and you can get some really easy picks with that M4. Now moving on to Thermite, the OG hard breacher in the game. Now a huge mistake that a lot of players make when using Thermite is the placement of the Thermite charge. Now this comes down to a lot of knowledge of maps, so it's hugely important to know the maps. For example, here on Skyscraper, if you place the charge on the far right of the single wall going into Geisha, you'll be able to open up the other wall inside out into Drum. Now there are so many other examples of this across the game and including another example here on a skyscraper over on the office side of the map if you place the thermite charge on the left side of the wall it will not only open up that wall but the wall in towards the left out towards minibar Now, like I said about there being tons of other examples of the use of the thermite charge, it doesn't necessarily have to be on a wall. This actually works for the site below this floor. If you place a thermite charge on the floor next to the desk here over on layer inside reception, you'll be able to open up the top half of the wall down inside lab. Now, this is huge for getting extra entry points and angles into the site, and it also opens up the floor for angles above as well, so there's multiple entry and angle points for the attackers. Another great example here is for the first floor weapons maintenance site. If you go upstairs into the second floor operational room where the hatch is and then walk out onto the hallway onto mezzanine, you can place a thermite charge on the far right hand side of the wall. This will break the wall and the hatch open. Of course, if it's reinforced and if it has cades on it, it will still open up the hatch and you will have access into the site.
Now moving on to Habana, the next hair breach operator, and this is a great help for you, especially if you're trying to get the hatch open and you don't have any way of getting the utility off the wall. If you change how many pellets she has to just using two, you can actually shoot pellets along the edges of the hatch and eventually you will destroy the cade underneath. This will allow you to then use four pellets to open up the hatch and gain access to the site. And this is really helpful if you don't have any EMPs or any way of getting the utility off. Now another great use for Habana here is because you can change the amount of pellets that you're using, you can create entry points and angles and lines of sights for your teammates. So for example here, using four pellets on the top and bottom will open up an entry point on the far left of the garage wall. And then if you put six pellets on the top, you can also create a line of sight for your teammates to use to cover you as you push into garage. I really do feel that it is very important to be utilizing the changing of the amount of pellets that you're using, creating angles, opening up castle doors, making sure that you still have enough pellets in pocket for getting hatches or opening up parts of the wall. She is such a versatile hard breacher and definitely one that you need to bring to the table. So moving on to Ace, we're going to look at some very simple adjustments that you can make to help you improve with the use of his Selmas. Now, a great example here on Oregon inside the small closet looking into the game's wall. So what you can do here is what I like to do is place a Selma on the left side about head height and then shoot out the one below it. This gives you an angle and then on the right side you place your Selma to make sure you have an entry point into the site. Now a mistake that I made that I'm actually glad that I did so I can show you a fix for it is leaving a vaultable gap with the Selmas puts you at risk to getting killed by the defenders. You can see here that me vaulting through is putting me at a disadvantage and giving the defender an advantage at getting a pick as you are kind of restricted in your movement as you're vaulting. So I have another example here on Chalet to show exactly where you place your Selmas to get walkable entry into the site. Now you can still place your single one on the left side, making sure to shoot out that second Selma, which gives you angles for your teammates to cover you as you make your way into the site. You then place your Selmas on the lowest point on the right, so you have a crouchable entry into the bomb site. You can then go behind the half wall, get the plant off, also with your teammates using that single wall to protect you as you defuse. Now another really simple trick here with Ace is kind of like with Habana, if you have a hatch that has utility on it and you can't get it open, you don't have any EMPs or help from your teammates to destroy the utility, you can place a Selma on either side on the soft part of the floor and the two of them will destroy the hatch and the utility. This is a kind of a last resort thing if you're struggling to get the wall open, but it gives you another option to getting into the site. So I really hope these extra little tips help you out moving forward as a hard breacher. And of course, if you have any other concerns, let me know down in the comment section. And of course, I will try to get a video to you. If there's other operators in the game that you'd like some advice on that I could give to you, then make sure to let me know down below. If you haven't liked the video, make sure to do so. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when we upload our next video. And I'll talk to you in the next one.